Thanks so much for inviting me over for Christmas, guys. I am so glad we're part of the same social bubble. Oh, I know this year has been insane. We haven't done any of our normal holiday traditions. No travel, no caroling, no being nice to each other. But, but, but Jeff and I have found a way to keep at least one of our holiday traditions alive. The Christmas Community Theater Show! Emily, you know I'd love to, but theaters have been closed since March. Ah, well that's where you're wrong, because we're bringing the theater experience to you! So sit back, relax, and enjoy one magic Christmas from our living room. It has everything. The breeder couple with no chemistry. You are so beautiful inside and out. That one old guy with the ballad. Memories, memories, this is my town. The middle-aged diva who is precast as the villain in every production. <laughs> the precocious kid in the cast who has a bigger career than she does. And intermission! Wine, please. Ten dollars. Well, I don't know, honey. They said that we didn't need an oil change until next month. It's I know, fine. but it's, it's just fine. a very good idea. You think you that the mechanic get... is not going to know when it's supposed to be an oil change? Okay, now, who's the person we know in this? Who's the main boy? Larry. No, not Larry. Gary? No, it might be Gary. Oh, I it think you're be. thinking of Gary. Okay. <coughs> Look at those kids up there performing their hearts out. I'm so glad I brought a Ricola. I'll, I left my stuff in the dryer. I love the part where he said, I don't think so. I gotta go get my stuff out of the dryer. I don't think so. <laughs> the dance captain who only has three lines but overacts them all. Hey everyone, what are we gonna do about her? The triple threat Fosse girl who's more of a dancer, singer, actor more than a singer, dancer, actor. The gospel singer moonlighting as an actor. And best of all, the writer who also happens to be the lead. She has all the best one-liners and she's magic for some reason. So settle in, Megan, for the best two hours, well, three with intermission, yeah. of your life. Uh, guys, if you want to watch a Christmas community theater production, we can watch Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. Oh, thank God. Whew. That's a close one. Whew. I'm very under rehearsed. Yeah, it's been a while. There we go. Stealing focus. Greetings, Broadway babies. I'm Emily. Hey, I'm Jeff. I'm Megan. And welcome to Stealing Focus. This is the show where we review everything musical theater. So we are really excited because we just watched a Christmas film. A Christmas film that you can watch on Netflix right now. So what is it called, my friends? Megan? Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. Christmas on the Square is a 2020 musical from Netflix. Music and lyrics by Dolly Parton. Screenplay by Maria S. Schlatter and directed and choreographed by the legendary Debbie Allen. Starring Christine Baranski, Jennifer Lewis, Treat Williams, and Dolly herself. The plot revolves around a wealthy businesswoman named Regina Fuller, who returns to her hometown in order to buy it and sell the land to make room for a mall. It says in the opening credits that this musical is based on a stage play. However, I have found absolutely no evidence of this stage play existing. <laughs> we are doing this review because this musical is hitting a certain feels for us because like we did in our <laughs> hilarious opening sketch, we are missing community theater a lot, especially at Christmas time. And Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square really hits that Christmas community theater mark perfectly. Not the least of which is because the book is very much structured like that community theater show. The place is gonna be bulldozed to make a freaking mall. This wasn't written in 2020. So we wanted to talk about this musical. We're gonna be doing kind of a lax version of our usual structures. So we are gonna talk about the standing O. Yes! The slow clap. Meh. 
and the Carrie the Musical. Boo. Boo. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we have a huge Dolly Parton fan in our midst, <laughs> one Megan Allison. <laughs> So, Megan, do you want to tell us a little bit about Dolly and her history with musical theater? Well, sure. All right, so, Dolly, she's been writing songs since she was, you know, knee-high to a pig's eye. But her first appearance in a musical that I know of is in the film version of Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Right. And she was phenomenal in that. She sang a little Christmas ditty, or it's become a Christmas ditty. Hard Candy Christmas. Dolly's first big Broadway writing credit was when she adapted the film version of 9 to 5 mm -hmm. to the stage, starring Allison Janney, Stephanie J. Block, and Megan Hilty as Dolly herself. She did a really good Dolly. But I do have to say, I did see 9 to 5 before it went to Broadway. Mm. Thoughts? It wasn't good. So you saw an out of town it, tryout? I saw. Well, I mean, if you consider Los Angeles an out of town tryout, oh, it was that's at out of town. it was at the Amundsen. So I mean, it wasn't <laughs> like really. exactly. Yeah. It was definitely a pre Broadway run, and it was not good. However, I see a lot of the same DNA in Nine to Five that I saw in uh, Christmas on the Square. Okay, so Christmas on the Square, standing O moments. The stuff we loved, the stuff that was not ironically good, the stuff that was just genuinely really good. Megan, your thoughts. I really love the choreography by Debbie Allen. Yes. Um, especially in the finale, or the big number kind of in the church, where everything's like... Yeah. Great. Yeah, if you've never heard of Debbie Allen, please look her up. She is a legend of directing and choreography. Um, she got her start on stage as a dancer. She like produced and direct, like, directed A Different World. Like mm -hmm. she was on Fame. There's this legendary footage of her dancing with Gwen Verdon. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. So she is really uh, a perfect choreographer for something like this. Because the choreography is very like. It's so good. And dancing it's, in it's the pews. obviously Debbie Allen choreography too though. Like I watched some of it and like in the my favorite part. I could tell it was Debbie Allen because it was very reminiscent of her choreography from Coming to America. Oh yeah. So it has very much an African influence to yeah. it. Which doesn't really fit in this town. Yeah. <laughs> However I still enjoyed it. Yeah it was a cool choice. And also she directed it. So she might as well choreograph. She's already there. Yeah. And the other thing is you can tell this is a really old school musical theater choreographer because there's nary a TikTok uh, dance. None of this <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Jeff, what was something you liked? Uh, Christine Bransky, man. Oh my a plus. God. What a talent. Hell. She's uh, she's so amazing because she she usually plays kind of character roles like, like she kind of... I feel like she's been pigeonholed a little bit into that Mamma Mia best friend kind yeah. of role. It's remarkable for someone to be able to be that good as a character actor and then still yeah. carry this film. And there are moments that shouldn't work necessarily, maybe because the the situation or the dialogue isn't great, but she makes it work because she's such a good actor. She totally made some moments believable that I feel like I should have been scoffing yeah. and saying this is garbage, but it wasn't because she carried it. Because Bravo. they got Baranski. You Ransky, know, she's I a saw her play Mrs. Lovett twice, and both times she was fantastic. I yeah. could imagine. When yeah. I saw her with Brian Stokes Mitchell, I met her afterwards, and she was like really uncomfortable that we were like stage dooring it, and she was like, "Oh, wasn't Stokes wonderful?" So she's basically that way in real life too. Then she was very chill. You could tell she's just very normal. She had like a I glass think. of wine and making. She didn't have a glass of wine <laughs> at the stage door. Well, at she the was Kennedy done Center. with the show. She <laughs> might as well. I have. would. Right. Cheers to that. Here we go. Well, I was really surprised by Janine Mason as Felicity. She was the gal who was definitely like the Fosse type. She's uh, a really amazing dancer, but genuinely an all-around wonderful musical theater performer. Um, I looked her up a little bit. She has a lot of acting creds. She also was on So You Think You Can Dance, I think, once or twice. I didn't know that. So um, I, I do think she is, like, the real deal. And she had really good chemistry with Dolly Parton. All of her scenes were with Dolly kind of scolding her about being a better angel. 
Um, but I, I thought she was a lot of fun. I would really like to see her in a lot more musicals. Like, I'd love to see her in, like, a touring production of Chicago or something. Oh, yeah. I feel like she'd be so great. Oh, and, totally. And at the end, she and Dolly are sitting atop the church in these really pretty oh, dresses. So and she looks really cute. Her part could be really thankless and um, could be really annoying in yeah, the wrong hands. That's what but I she was genuinely charming. There was a danger of that character mm -hmm. being way overdone, trying way too hard. Yeah. And she kind of kept it grounded, which mm -hmm. I really appreciated. Because that can go off the rails pretty quick if you got somebody that can't really do it. She's a Gwen Verdon type. She is the girl in your company who can like sing just enough but is really more of like right. a dance an Anne Ranking like if you will. And Rest then, in peace. But she can also be grounded and be in a scene with Dolly Parton and just be there you know. Yeah. And not just her but also Definitely the like actors. the all around yeah. musical theater performance. Yeah. She's a strong actress. Yeah. yeah. You know I'm always going to have to give my girl Dolly a little bit of a clap. She was very cute. She was floating on a cloud. She floats on she a cloud. She was floating on a she cloud. She gorgeous. She's the prettiest homeless woman that there ever There's was. The opening scene, she's a homeless lady, and she just looks amazing. I like, don't believe you're homeless <laughs> for a second. <laughs> the no. costume was in the style of homeless person, but it was gorgeous. It was like all wrapped up weird and like, like the look But nice. it was very dolly, because, yeah. you know, she always wears her clothes like three sizes too small. Yeah. Something she always says. Um, But she was gorgeous and wonderful, and she was very... Very Dolly. And it's so beautiful to see her, to hear her sing her lyrics. Like, there's a lot of people that maybe yes. can't pull off those lyrics, but you know, always know she can pull it well, off. Well, and I feel like that'll lead us into some other points that we're going to yeah. talk about, mm -hmm. because right. her lyrics are very specific to her style mm -hmm. of singing. I gotta give it up for my man, Burger. My treat! Treat! Treat Williams! <laughs> old Burger had his had his ballad. He was just My like the Burger. old guy If there. you guys don't know, if you ever watch uh, the hair film... It's not very good. Uh, it's, it's a Milos not. Forman film? It's very different from the stage version because stage version is very difficult to film. But anyway, they filmed it in the 70s. He is rad as Burger. He's just dope. He's got like long hair. He's just like this fun-loving guy. But it's just cool because... The, this character was bordering on too earnest and too simple and basic for me, but he, he held it together for me with with his intensity and how grounded he was and how honest he was in those scenes. If you had, like, if this was a community theater production, like, it would really hinge on what kind of guy you cast for that part, and it mm -hmm. could go really, really wrong. Yeah. But luckily, Treat Williams is quite good. Yeah. I really like the music a lot. I think mm -hmm. the songs are all very catchy, I think they all are in um, different styles. Um, Dolly can write a really catchy melody. Um, they show off her performers really well. Her score, the compositions, the music itself, I really liked. You know something else that I really liked about this production is the ensemble nature of it. It felt, it really felt like a theater show. There's a, a part for show. everyone. But it's not just, okay, so you have scenes in the square where the dancers are doing all their Debbie yeah. Allen stuff. But then they're also the extras later in this scene and in this oh, scene yeah. and in this scene. And they and they reused and it, I mean they shot it in the Well battery, and that's how it would be there. in your stage production. Yeah. Like there's always through line ensemble characters and this movie really followed through with it. They right. utilized all their actors the way a, a stage production would. And that's a choice that I appreciated because they, they it worked for me in the new medium film. So we're you know, obviously it's all on camera. It's gonna be completely different from the stage in that respect. But it tied in and it had the roots of a theater show because you're like, oh, there's that guy again. Oh, the mailman, he's playing the piano at the church. Like You feel like they're actually a part of this company. It's not just random extras in the background. I thought that was a cool choice. Can we also talk about the little girl who plays Violet? Oh, you guys. Bravo. She's so cute. Adorable. She's the cutest little bartender that I've ever seen. <laughs> She's yeah, a bartender. There, there is a, about that? Oh, my God. There is a scene. There's a song called <laughs> Fairy Tale where Christine Baranski gets served alcohol by a child. Right. And they She's sit there bar. commiserating and they're like, life's not a fairy tale. It reminded me. Fairy tale. It was very reminiscent of class from the Chicago movie. Like, that is what I wanted them to be saying. Nobody's got no class. That was a really cute moment for her. She had that was, whole scene and song with Christine. And Marcy. it's a cute song. It would actually be a really cute duet between, um, like, a kid and an, and an older woman. Absolutely. Like, if you, it's another, like, uh, duet option. But she was wonderful. Um, She's a very, <laughs> and not a big plot point, but, like, there's a side plot with her. Oh, there's yeah. a big sequence with her. 
Yeah, there, that's right. There was a whole like B or C story about her, what happened to her because unfortunately she's in an accident and she's we in see a car crash. Everything that her that her father has to go through and, and it. She's got a bandage on her head with no wounds and just one little it's bandage pre-surface. right there. It's like yeah. a nineteen forties war film. Yeah, and they have like the bandages just around like their head. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, I got shot, but yeah. in your head. There's no yeah. specifics <laughs> of how. The, there's no specifics of how the injury yeah. happened. You yeah. Know? I, I also love Jennifer Lewis because ain't nobody effing with her. Her in these streets. Ha ha! She's so good, man. Oh Rock my god. Star. She Rock is star. Regina's best friend and she has a full on gospel amazing. number and she's just like, whatever, Regina, blah, I'm gonna do your hair, but you're the queen of mean. And this is where it would work so well on stage. Like that role would crush on stage. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh man, you get like the be- like you're just best like character actor in that part who could just nail it. God bless. It would be a part Jennifer Holiday would play. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I also would be remiss if I didn't mention like the only Broadway actor who was in this film besides Christine Baranski. One Douglas Sills who played her father. He was the Scarlet Pimpernel and he was uh, the dentist in the Broadway. It's not a revival because it was the only Broadway only production. Broadway, the Broadway but... production of Little Shop of Horrors. So he did a little bit of singing, but it was kind of cool to be like, oh, Douglas Sills, haven't seen you in a minute. Well done. All right, so we are now in the uh, slow clap section. I, I really did love the movie, mm-hmm. and I loved everything about it. However, um, the acting, even though they're stellar performers, yeah, there was some delivery that was a little poor. And I feel like it was based off the direction. And I hate saying that because I never want to slam my girl Debbie. Right. But if you make someone like Christine Bransky, who I know how much you loved everything about her in this. And I loved her too. But like some of her line delivery was not exquisite. Yeah. Um, and So imagine how it was for the actors who aren't like just natural Performer. Geniuses, yeah. like for these people who are like, this is my first gig in a movie, and I've only done stage work before this. But, it, but the, and, and isn't that kind of the reason why you're comparing it to a community theater show? Like with the people from the community, not necessarily great actors, but you know, it's reminiscent of that because yeah. we have this ensemble that most of them are Atlanta actors. Singers and dancers. Do you know that it was filmed in Atlanta? Absolutely, I know it was filmed in Atlanta. It's a Hallmark Channel version of a, of a theatrical show. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. The lyrics leave a lot to be desired. Yeah. I loved the music. The melodies were really great. But there was no subtext in this film. None. The lyrics Every were the subtext. Every single scene was like, oh, I'm coming in to do this thing. We've known each other since childhood. And yeah. now yeah. I'm telling you I'm building them all. Like there was none. Yeah. Everything was just kind of right there laid out for you. And again, that's pretty common in community theater because you need that. But in a movie, when it, all these characters are kind of just singing the obvious stuff, it was a lot. You could absolutely make a drinking game out of... Every time Christine Baranski says, I've got to get out of this town. <laughs> oh, yeah. got to get out of I this town. I think in the end, she even says, like, I have changed. I mean, if, you're, if yeah. your lyrics are, I have changed, I mean, you can't, that can't go into the next draft. You have to change that lyric, you know? So this is the thing that we're just talking about Dolly and how much we love her. And she can, she has the charisma and the, the gravitas, the moxie to pull off these lyrics because she's just so happy with well, herself. Well, no, she's writing she's for just, country music. Yeah. She's a exactly. country writer. She's a storyteller. And yeah. country music songs are very different than musical the- modern Absolutely. musical theater songs. So her straightforwardness in a country song and attention to detail is good, but in a musical score where you're hearing a bunch of songs back to back, Treat Williams' big song ends with and again, and again, memories like he just says memories memories a bunch of times and you're like oh okay and then there's like those classic musical theater show off the ensemble songs like the wickedest witch of the middle Mm -hmm. which is that felt like a junior production thing that was so like well we have a kid in the back who needs to have a solo but they're not a really good singer so let's make her the old lady and then she'll get a line to do that's what it felt like which is great on stage but in a netflix movie you're like shouldn't this be better yeah. yeah they just they didn't have the time or the budget or any of that 
But they, they did. They, I'm just, well, if they did, you, they did. You know why they may not have, though? Because Dolly Parton donated a bunch of money for the Moderna vaccine. Yeah, right. we have the COVID vaccine thanks to Dolly. Thank you, Dolly. Well, and that's the other thing. It's like, we can say there's not a lot of experienced actors in Atlanta. We knew a bunch of people who moved out there who are professional that's actors. True. So, there because are. it's the new Hollywood. So, it like... Is. It's the new Vancouver. So they there should be kind of good pool to pull from, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Going back to Dolly's lyrics, like, I don't think that they were terrible throughout the show. I thought there were plenty of times when it worked. It was just for me, it was toward the end um, when we were tying up some storylines, uh, when we were getting to the climax of the film, this mm-hmm. musical, that's where I really needed somebody to help her out a little bit with... Creating new ways of saying things without it directly being what you're trying to say. Use that as subtext and create something new from that. Sort of like we were talking about the Grinch musical, like it just never got changed. It just got locked in. The first draft songs are stuck in there. There are lots of times in the show that I didn't mind Dolly's lyrics at all. No. In fact, I thought they were pretty great, especially at the beginning Christmas when is the she's time for singing. Karen. It's so adorable. She's just a she's like a ball of light or something. She's just a, you just want to hug you her. You can't help Stop not a cloud. You can't help but look at her and love her. She is just yeah. effervescent. I do really appreciate that all the leads in this movie, all the characters of importance, are uh, people my parents' age. Um, you don't really get to see very many uh, romantic stories told about people over the age of 60 or 70, so uh, I really appreciated that. Way more compelling than some of our other uh, characters, but we'll get into that in a second. I thought the story was pretty good. You know, again, we're, it does feel like a little outdated. Tearing down a downtown area to build a mall is totally outdated. Is that what the but, story is about? No, 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 but I'm saying a part of the story. But what I think... Because I'm going to get into it in the next What section. the story did... Oh, there's a whole subplot where Regina has a brain tumor. Oh, I forgot about that. I think it's supposed to be why she I thinks forgot. she's seeing Dolly as an angel, but it really doesn't matter all that much because it doesn't really want to make her be a better person. It's just that... She thinks she's hallucinating Dolly Parton Angel because of it. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the stuff that we really hated. The stuff that we really didn't like. So, there is this subplot. Maybe it's the main plot. It's not a plot at the beginning and then all of a sudden it is one. And it reminds me of Bright Star a lot. Sans baby being thrown in a, you know, from the train. It's about a woman, Regina who has a relationship with Treat Williams when she is young, but through misunderstandings that could be solved through conversation. She has a baby with another guy out of wedlock. Then the dad hides the baby away and then comes up with an elaborate scheme for her to find the baby, including the in- putting the information in a Bible that he hid in a lantern. And then the second she finds this lantern, after hunting for it, she finds it, she reads what the baby's name is, and she goes, now I know my daddy really loved me. (laughs) And I was like, excuse me? Excuse me? He, what? No, no, no. But it turns out uh, her baby is the worst actor in the movie. He's (laughs) so bad. He's so bad. Josh Segarra. And Mary Lane Haskell are our breeder pair. And Mary Lane Haskell has been in numerous Dolly Parton projects. So she's like, I don't know, like what Chris Jackson is to Lin-Manuel Miranda, I guess. The best way I can describe his performance is if he's like an alien from outer space who's never heard humans converse before, didn't have any understanding. No, what I feel is that English obviously is not his first language. So, I feel like he was struggling a lot with the script. Well, he was in... That. He's a, since he's on an American feet. actor. Well, then, he was in On Your Feet. He played what? He played And Leo he was in Dogfight Estefan. and Liz Estrada Jones. All right, but he's from Florida. All right, then never mind what I was saying because he seems, He went to Tish. He seems as Tish. Well. It just doesn't make sense. Like, uh, how, how does that happen? Apparently, his mommy and daddy have money, and they bought his way into Tish. <laughs> he I says every NYU. line in it's... the film like, this is my wife, and uh, my wife, Jenna, and I love you it's so, so much. It's so weird. Like, who talks like this? Because when you have someone delivering you lines, like, yeah. like what, Jeff? Like, what? I don't know why you don't. Talk to me anymore. He never has a line like that in the whole movie because he's in love with her so much. He says, like, you are so beautiful. I love you, lovey, love, well, love, 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 love,
love you all the so time. I want babies. babies. They have no problems. Not a single problem. All they, they want a baby and everything else is like mm-hmm. secondary. They don't have any relationship. Yeah. There's no there's no believability to the relationship. Like how do they you, meet? When do they You like, don't care about that. And no, she the don't. whole time she, I swear she's like looking at him like It was very reminiscent of Vera Ellen. <laughs> oh yeah. Well and then and then in the end they want a baby and he doesn't even get her pregnant. Dolly Parton gets her pregnant. Yeah, Dolly she Parton does. was like Shh. And then she's like, I believe. So Dolly Parton got her pregnant. There's also, uh, like we mentioned before, there's kind of a gross moment where the little kid gets hit by a car. (gasps) And then the dad, who has not a single scratch on him, just kind of a ripped shirt with some blood on it, he gets to sing by her side. And there's a moment where he's like, God, it's okay if you have to take her. It's okay if she wants to be with her mama. And you're like, what? He's yeah. also terrible. He what? was also yeah, terrible. Yeah. What is this? But I hated that that was written in there. And sorry, Dolly, I hate those lyrics where it's like, if you gotta go be with your mama, go do that. It's like, no, don't. Well, Why? and they cast this guy because he's a great singer and he could do what they wanted somebody to do in that song. And I guess it was just that. written poorly. Well, and this is the other thing. So at the end, Regina finds out who her son is. Her son is the terrible pastor. And I don't know if he has parents who raised him. Yeah, they skipped over They that. never come up. He finds it out. Then he goes to the final church sermon where the whole town is. And he's like, I'd like you to welcome my mother, Regina Fuller. And everyone's like, what? And then like, then, then they, he's never like, wait a second, but I was yeah, adopted or never. nothing. They even have a line where she's like, Christmas is a time for grandmas. And you're like, but she, she didn't raise you. Yeah. She's not your yeah. grandma. She's yeah. a birth mother. But that, that concept is like, here, just plug in here, plug in here. Grandma plug, grandpa plug. That's like, it's not how life works. He had parents. parents. He probably has this whole other family that we don't know about. Yeah. It just was weird how he didn't have a, at least a line of dialogue about it. And now it's like that super duper happy ending. He gets everything he wants. He gets oh. the baby and the mom and the, you know, and it's like. Unless he already has parents. And then what is that? Even yeah. le- and anyway. it's like, hey, I met my birth mother. I hated it that um, there were at least two or three numbers that didn't end with a resolve. There were two or three songs where they were like, Regina, you got to get yourself together, Regina. No one likes a mean lady. And then I would expect like, yeah. But then it was like, you got to get yourself together, Regina. You're a mean lady. Well, anyway, I have to go about my work. And it would never end. And the same thing happened with the angel song. Everybody needs an angel. Felicity, come and help me out. Blah, 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 blah. They should have turned back to the camera and been like, everybody needs a friend. But they didn't do it. Really bothered me. Really, really bothered me. Did it bother you? The pastor and uh, Jenna had no chemistry. Jenna. And and they had lyrics like, you are so beautiful inside and out. You are the one I cannot live without. It works on stage and it definitely works, you know, with kids theater or middle schools, high schools, whatever. But in a production like this, where it's, you know, very you know, well filmed. I mean, we can, it's not like cinematography like it's a film or anything. But yeah, it's, but it everybody. It was a cardboard you, set. You there can was see a cardboard it, church. But, but even end. like a Hallmark movie has quality to the images. And if you're, if you're up there acting like you are a middle schooler in a middle school play, I mean, it shows. Yeah. It's not a good look. This guy, Josh Segarra, has so many creds. And I don't know how he came out of this movie looking so. Yeah. inept yeah. at musical theater. It's a real bummer. And then this other gal, Mary Lane Haskell, I don't know, she just screamed to me like that one leading ingenue girl in the theater company who has mm-hmm. to have the part like this. Yeah. And she gets it and she just overacts the whole thing. Like, yeah. I mean, she wasn't bad. Like, at least she was trying unlike this other guy. But she just was, they, they just were the worst. That kind of actor, to me, and the way that it came across her performance, yeah. she was happy to be there. She was trying to do what she thought they wanted, mm-hmm. I think. And so it didn't feel authentic. The opening credit sequence is hilarious. It's like screenshots with like a Monet filter all over it. I think that's Lots another... That's a pointillism. Yeah, I think that's another moment where like re- you really feel like the lifetime hallmark of it. it felt, that yeah. definitely felt like a TV movie beginning, even from yeah. like 20, 30 years ago. To me, it was very years. reminiscent of a young Thomas Kincaid. Oh, I love a good Thomas Kincaid. <laughs> the Lord of Light? No, what is that? Oh. The Lord of Light. <laughs> the something Lord of something light? with light. He's... The Lord of Light? <laughs> like from Game of Thrones? He's all about light, that guy. <laughs> 
so like I said, uh, Christine Baranski and Treat Williams, their whole misunderstanding could have been solved with a conversation. It's a tried and true musical theater trope. If any, if, if people talk to each other, we don't get these stories yeah. because people that's the way people write these stories sometimes. It's a small misunderstanding that leads the, that puts the whole story in motion. Okay, so uh, I think we've talked about it more than enough. Yes. So um, what are our final thoughts on Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square, Megan? You know what? I really enjoyed it. I feel like this is something that should become a holiday classic because we need this. Mm -hmm. We need a little bit of levity, even if the lyrics aren't you know, that perfect. You know, it is wonderful. It was delightful. I enjoyed it. Drink some eggnog and have a great time. Jeff? Yeah, and I, uh, you know, I, I went into it thinking I probably wouldn't like it or I'd make fun of it. I loved it too. I thought it was very, I thought overall, the, I liked it. It was a fun watch. I thought the story was interesting. Um, I love Dolly and her lyrics, particularly at the beginning. As I said, I would want a, a couple of tweaks toward the end. But I think done well, and especially on stage, this could really be good. I liked it a lot. Yeah, and um, I, I'm kind of of the same mind. You know, uh, um, I think if you are a musical theater person, like you are an actor or a director, or you came from the theater world, I think kind of like how you watch Waiting for Guffman, you're gonna <laughs> <Yeah>. feel <laughs> you're gonna feel an affinity for this because you are going to relate to the the style to the performers um to the structure it's all gonna be very familiar for you because you've probably done or seen a show like this before so um if you're coming into it expecting like the prom or something it's not gonna be that there are just as many good good genuinely good moments as there are kind of silly campy like take a drink um I will stupid love moments and i think it strikes that balance really well so i would say um it it would be a wonderful tradition for you to start with uh, your friends and family or God knows maybe there are production rights. Uh, I have no idea because there's nothing online about well, should be. what this stage production was like. If you know, drop it in the comments. Please, please tell, tell us. us. Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, we hope you have a Merry Christmas. Have a, a Holly happy, Dolly Christmas. Have a Holly Dolly Christmas. Uh, so we <laughs> hope you have a wonderful holiday season and uh, bid 2020 adieu. Uh, See ya. Wouldn't want to be. Yeah. yeah. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Merry, Thanks merry, again. Merry, merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy, happy New Year.